This is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're gonna use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. The aluminum frame or camera bezel can also be pried off, but it requires to remove the back plate. On the back, we can see the other side of the aluminum frame, which is basically tucked underneath and adhered to the back glass. And on the flash diffuser, there's a hole for the back microphone, and there's a small pathway inside, which picks up sound from the ring of the flash diffuser. There are 19 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the flex cable for the wireless charging coil and the NFC antenna need to be disconnected. And then the graphite film over the bottom speaker assembly needs to be peeled off. The wireless charging coil is located in the center and the NFC antenna is located on top. There's also a large graphite film covering them to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we can disconnect it. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. The top plastic cover can also be removed. There are some antenna lines on this plastic cover, which are those light gray color lines. Here's a look at the other side. The front facing camera can be disconnected, however it's glued in place. At this point, the main board can be lifted up and removed. Looking at the main board, there's a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel wide angle lens, and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens. Only the wide angle and telephoto lens have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone located on the top corner and the LED flash and light sensor are located below. The main board is a dual layer board design. The camera connectors are located on the back and they can be disconnected by just popping them off. The proximity sensor is located next to the top camera connector and there's graphite film on the back shield to help transfer heat. The third microphone is located right here and that's the microphone for the back which picks up sound from the flash diffuser. Once the graphite film is peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of the RAM and processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste cleaned off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the top speaker assembly. Now the speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. The top speaker assembly has the little white foam balls underneath the blue tape. And here's a look at the other side. Now the bottom speaker assembly can be removed. Here's a better look at that. And this speaker assembly also has the little white foam balls. And there's a thermal pad underneath the speaker assembly as well. Now as far as the linear vibrator motor or haptic feedback motor, when I first took the S22 apart, I didn't even see it, so I totally forgot to look for it. And then later on when I looked at the video, I thought it was in between the screen and the frame on the bottom portion of the phone. But actually a few people pointed it out in the comments that the flex cable for the speaker assembly does have four contacts instead of just two. So I tested it out and I removed the speaker assembly. And then when I powered on the phone, there was no vibrate. And then when I installed the speaker assembly again and powered the phone on, the vibrate feature worked. So the motor is actually located in the speaker assembly itself and it's closed off. So I'd have to actually tear the speaker assembly apart to see it. There's glue all around the speaker assembly itself which is adhering it to this plastic piece. So the vibrator motor would be located on this back part of the speaker assembly. Now the flex cable connecting the main board to the screen can be disconnected. So if you need to replace your screen, there are two ways you can do it. You can heat up the front of the phone and just pry the screen off from the front. 
or you can take the back plate off and remove the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and remove that speaker assembly so you can disconnect the flex cable for the screen this way. And then once you have that flex cable disconnected, you can pry your old screen off, apply a new adhesive and reapply your new screen and just reassemble the phone. Obviously just prying the screen off from the front would be the easiest method. However, it might be a little bit difficult trying to seat the replacement screen perfectly so the cable connector will just connect when you're pushing it down. Now we're going to disconnect the two flex cables which connect the main board to the subboard. There are three Phillips screws which are holding down the subboard that need to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. The primary microphone is located here and there's a red rubber gasket around the charger port. The SIM reader is located on the back. Now onto the battery. There are no pull taps provided to help pry the battery off, so we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the sides of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath the battery, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 4500 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber, which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. Now comparing this with the design of the S22, the S22 had 3D graphite, which is layers of graphite to help transfer heat. Once the film on the bottom is removed, we can see the in-display fingerprint sensor. There's a liquid damage indicator, which is a white sticker on the bottom. And there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter for the speaker openings on the bottom and top of the frame, as well as the microphone openings. And for those of you who might have accidentally stuck your SIM injector tool in the wrong hole, you don't have to worry since the microphone and filter are seated above the holes. So it's like an L shape and the SIM ejector tool won't reach them to cause any damage. There's one millimeter wave 5G antenna on the top right and one on the bottom left of the phone. The top right one is held on with some adhesive and the bottom left is held on with two Phillips screws. Also some variants of this phone for different regions might not come with these antennas and that doesn't mean that the phone doesn't have 5G. These antennas are just for those carriers which use the ultra wide band 5G. If you need to replace the flex cable, power button or volume keys, there's a plastic and metal bracket in the frame. You'd have to pull that bracket out of the frame by lifting it up and pulling it out. And that will give you access to removing the physical keys or replacing the flex cable. All right, so to pry the screen off, we need to apply heat to the front of the phone so we can loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're gonna use a suction cup tool to help gain leverage between the screen and the frame. And then we're gonna use a plastic pry tool to pry the screen off. Here's a better look at the screen. The fingerprint sensor is located here and there's a cutout on the screen on the top for the proximity sensor. So I just put the flex cable over here to give an example. So if the screen flex cable is over here and you pry your screen off from the front without disassembling the back, when you're applying your new screen, you're gonna have to align the connector with the flex cable over here since there isn't much movement with the flex cable. So you just get your screen and line up correctly and then you'd have to press down to make sure it connects. Aside from that, underneath the screen on the frame there's some copper tape, as well as a large layer of graphite to help transfer heat. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply your backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. It looks like the display got damaged when I was prying it off. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.